Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I got a killer video here for you guys today. We're gonna to be taking the best battery that we've ever tested here on the channel and facing it off against the worst battery by placing them both into a limitless V1. And then after we see those clips, we're gonna be taking a look at what's actually happening behind the scenes. Now I do have to say that recording these clips did not come without challenge. Let's get into it and I'll show you exactly what I mean. This is the SMC V4, the SRD version. We're gonna see what we got and we are recording. Yep, you see the issue that I run into. We'll get it down quickly. there. I also want to make sure I got good distance when I'm getting the car out. We got wind in our face right now from straight out. So it's kind of a crosswind on the path that we're going to be taking here. We're going to get it right up to that section where I can see that the road kind of just changes a bit. Right here. We'll turn around. And from here, check. And we're good. So let's get her going straight. Straight. I like that. there's what not to do. Now I show a few clips here because I was going to originally leave this out but I thought you know what this is the reality of shooting these videos and sometimes this happens. Uh, you can see that I'm slowly getting closer and closer to the edge of the grass until this very final clip that I show here where it's so close to the grass that I just barely catch and it rides on the grass for quite some time and tumbles at the very end but no damage so I'm able to just dust it off and get her back out there again. So this is an immediate pass again. Unfortunately, it's pass number two for this battery. And you can see even there, I'm getting quite close to the edge of that grass, which is unfortunate because I'm trying to actually avoid that. But luckily nothing happened in this pass, so we're good to go. Let's bring it back and pull the speed off of that run, or both the runs, really. You can still see the dirt on the front end of the car there. Yeah, that's from the incident. And stop, read, 160. It's moving, it's pretty good. Z battery, 4S. Now we switch the battery. This is now the Z4S pack in the car. And we're gonna do the very same thing again. I'm getting the car out there at a reasonable distance so that when I'm crossing in front of me, that's roughly where it's gonna be at 100% throttle for a second or so. And then I can ride that out as it blows by me. So I'm doing the exact same thing, get it out there. We're gonna turn around and, and then send it. All right, let's check, we're clear. Set the glasses straight and go. Very interesting pass because I can actually hear the difference. I can see the difference in speed and it looks quite drastic to me just watching it here again. Bringing the car back and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna check the speed and we're gonna jump right into the data. Stop, read on the Z here. One twenty eight on the Z. Here's the data log that we have of the SMC runs that we made. Now, obviously we got two runs here and I'm not really certain when reviewing this, which run we achieved the top speed in. It could have been past one and it also could have been past two. The data and the RPM values are very similar between each one of these paths. So we're gonna take a look at pass number two and the information that we can see from this. And we're also gonna go quickly through the Z log to see exactly what's going on in that as well. And 
And when I take a look at this, we can see how we get that ramp up and we hit a maximum current of around 445 amps. And near the end of the run, we are seeing the current drop down to 320 amps. And the big thing here is that our voltage is maintained. You can see at the end of the run that we're somewhere in the 12.8 so or so volts. And at the beginning, we are jumping all around the 13 volt mark to 12.8, to back down to 12.2. So somewhere in that mix there and the peak current actually happens closer to where we see a 12.8 volt on that SMC run. Now, if we take a look at the Z run that we have, this is the Z run and you can see that the voltage in red is the thing that stands out most to me. We can see at the very beginning of the run here that our voltage is hitting like 9.5, 9.4 volts. This is why guys, it's important to take your voltage cutoffs on your top speed runs right out of the equation so that you'll never hit that. The idea is that we only make a few passes maximum and then we bring that car back in and there's where you can check the battery. I've never really consumed more than 60% of the capacity and even even by then it's right around that voltage for storage that you want to go and store the battery at. So I don't even need to take any further out from there. Now what's important to look at is that current value. We start off with 325 amps. It drops all the way down to 216 amps or so. Now I want to take this information, drop it into graphs and show you a chart and a couple graphs that we can look at. Now jumping into the chart here, we have the chart that represents the SMC in the gray color and the Z in that lighter blue color. And what I do want to focus on in this chart is the percentage difference. And we're going to go back and forth between this and the mini graphs that I've created just so we can see how it actually compares when you look at this visually. So if we take a look at the maximum speed, what we have here is the SMC at 160 kilometers an hour. This works out to 100 miles per hour, 99.4 miles per hour, I think is the actual amount. 161 is your true 100 miles per hour. Now the Z-Pack at 128 kilometers an hour, this is more about that 79 and a half miles per hour, which is a drastic difference when you're talking a speed run vehicle. It takes a lot more power to do 20 miles per hour more, and you'll see that in these runs here. So we got a percentage difference for speed of 25%, and you can see that drastic difference on the chart. And when I say this, this is probably this, the lowest amount of difference that we have in all of the graphs that we're gonna be comparing here. When we take a look at the Z battery at voltage at speed, it was just over 10 volts, and and the SMC was somewhere around that 13 volts at speed. And the difference here is 30%. Now what's really incredible is when we look at the current, I wanna show you this graph here, we're just above the 200 and something amps at speed for the Z and over 300 amps for the current for the SMC. Now what's drastic about this is we're doing 100 plus amps more on the SMC, but it was able to maintain 30% more voltage. That is truly incredible. And this makes the wattage at speed 4,000 versus 2,000. And when you look at the wattage at speed, the top right graph here, this is showing nearly double, which is incredible yet again. And if we go back and take a look now, the voltage at all the peaks, the voltage there at peak power was around the 12.8 volts versus 9.4 volts on the Z. This produced a 36% difference and then peak current was 445 amps versus 327 amps. And same idea, we're delivering more than 100 amps more and we got several volts more on the SMC. This leads to good numbers when you're talking about performance for this particular battery and our particular runs. And then you look at the peak wattage, which is this third graph here, and it again shows that this SMC bar is nearly double of the Z bar. And then we take a look at the last value here, which is the time at wide open throttle. It works out to be 3.4 seconds for the SMC and 5.2 seconds for the Z. And for the very first run that we made of the SMC, it was a little bit higher, but I'd imagine that some of that really doesn't count because we started to edge close to that section of the grass off the side of the road and then I let off and hit the brakes. The disadvantage here is that the SMC didn't get time to really wind out to see if it can get and achieve a higher top speed. The Z got 
you know, a couple seconds or so more in order to get that top speed that it achieved of 128. So had this SMC been somewhere closer to 5.2, we probably could have seen the opportunity of 161, 162 kilometers per hour, but that just wasn't the case in our test today. Hey guys, just before we wrap things up here, I did want to mention that we spoke about this earlier in the video that it did not come without its own challenges. This video had challenges indeed. Everything from the crash that you saw earlier on the video to a crash that required replacement parts about a week before I recorded all the footage here that you saw today and literally a battery as I've tested it losing a cell in the middle of a run. I've never had this before when actually using the battery it lost a cell and now that battery pack is no longer able to become part of the seven that I'm going to otherwise show you in the next week or two. So that's right I tested a total of six batteries and you saw two of the six in the next video that I show you, I'm going to go through each one of those batteries, much like what we did here today, and compare all six for you. Well, guys, hope you enjoyed this one. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.